Okay, so first thing we're gonna be doing before you do any type of painting or sanding on your gun, you're gonna be taking apart all the parts that you do not want to get painted. So first I'm gonna go with the optic. Okay. All right, so once you have your lower and your upper disassembled, we'll go over just the parts we want paint. So uh, for this, I'm gonna be painting my handguard, my basically my entire lower minus the spot where my stock's gonna be, keeping the barrel uh, plain black, okay? With this, you guys can use newspaper or paper towels. I'm just going to get the barrel kind of where I don't want to have any paint on it wrap this around kind of as a mask. Give yourself a little bit of room to tape onto your gun. Nice and straight. Inside my chamber and stuff, I'll stuff that with some paper towels as well. Any of the moving parts of your gun, you don't want to get paint on them. To close this injection port cover as well. Here I have all these kind of little plug holes for my butt stock. With these, I'm not going to try to get a lot of paint inside this. The more paint you guys get inside this, um, the more kind of uh, pressure and tension, I guess you could say, or difficulty adjusting your butt stock you're going to have. So. Wrap this. Same thing with inside my magazine well. For your trigger housing and stuff in here, uh, again, don't want to get any paint in there. So, another piece of paper towel. Kind of start to wad and pack it in there. Perfect, so I've packed all that with your trigger down here, again. Just get some tape on this. A couple other things to keep in mind, where your charging handle will sit up on here, on the back. You guys can tape individual grooves for markings. Um, I usually leave mine taped as well so I can see whether you know, hey, like right here at T2, four, six, eight, all the way up, I can place my optic in a specific spot rather than painting them all and then I don't really know kind of reference points on where I put my optic, so. Okay, if you guys want to as well, so kind of your basic stuff, you just need to tape, make sure you get that trigger shoe magazine weld inside this. If you want to go more in depth, um, we're gonna be adding paint or tape to these marking indicators on the rail. And then you can also take off your safety selector. Uh, we're gonna take this bath loader off and then we can also take um, the trigger and the magazine release button off as well. Just kind of do a more in depth takedown. Okay, so I took the trigger out, uh, took my safety selector out, took the magazine release out. Last thing, I'll take this bath lever off. Make sure you guys are kind of keeping little organized piles of all the shit you take off so you don't lose it or get um, a little bin or something so you don't mix anything up. Okay, so after I did that, again, it would be a good idea to pack this stuff. So getting that paper towels and stuff that I had, I can just pack them back inside there. Got that. Hand guards, totally disassembled this uh, QD thing I'll leave on there, but the handguard itself is done. With uh, my upper here, I'm still gonna be adding tape in these little kind of identifying slots. So a simple way to do that, you can just get your piece of masking tape, lay it down, get a razor blade. Whoops, lay it flat. Up. Put it right down inside there. Okay, so once you guys have ma mainly all your stuff taped up, uh, you're gonna get your spray paint all kind of prepped. Try to get some sort of space uh, where you're not gonna get overspray onto stuff if you're worried about that or do it out in the dirt. Um, another important thing too, depending on what colors you, you're using, uh, you always wanna work from light to dark. So if I have, let's say, tan and a um, 
kind of olive drab green, I'm gonna be using that tan as a base coat. Just kind of how the um, old pattern or old, old base layer on this camo is. Uh, gonna be using the tan, then working up and adding those layers in darker and darker as we get uh, more towards the end of this process. Okay, so again, here it is. I've taped basically everything that I need to tape on this. Hand guards totally taken off. And then with my lower, everything that I want taken off is taken off, okay? If you guys wanna go the extra step and, you know, um, take anything else off this, you can, but for right now, this bolt catch and my takedown pins, they're fine just the way they are. And another thing too, if I keep my takedown pins in, it doesn't get any pain in those holes. It's easier to take them out and stuff without having paint and stuff I have to grind down in there. So first thing I'm gonna do when I start to paint, test your paint, just doing a very fine kind of base layer over this and letting it dry. I don't need to soak it with paint, just kind of a real fine base layer. You may see some of the stuff from underneath, that's totally fine. With your hand guard or even my lower or my upper, I can put little zip ties through these or a piece of chicken wire or something, just kind of giving yourself a point where you can hold on to and then just going down. This hand guard. Covering with paint. Again, just doing light kind of layers this first time through. Not worrying about getting too much paint. Again, with my lower, holding it back here where I'm not gonna get paint on my hands. Lightly coating it. And this base layer is gonna help all the other paint stick and stay on there for longer. Gives it more kind of durability. Okay, so once I have my base layer there, all I'm gonna do, just let it sit, probably 10, 15 minutes. This flat, ultra flat color spray paint, this stuff dries really fast. Make sure you guys you know, have a fan and stuff going on it, but it should be dry here, 10, 15 minutes. Once it's dry again, I'm just gonna do another coat. And the second coat that I do, I can add it a little bit thicker, um, trying to kind of cover up some of those imperfections and stuff in the old camouflage pattern, so. Yeah, that wraps it up for this first part. Another optional thing you guys can do, uh, kind of user preference, doesn't really matter. If I have any real big scars and stuff from the past um, paint job, kind of on both sides, you can see I do. These aren't as bad. Um, over here though, I do have you know some more aggressive ones. You guys can get some of that 220 sandpaper just in that spot, just kind of giving a little bit of a smoothed out kind of feel for it. So I smoothed out that one. Same thing here. First solid layer here, guys. So again, using my light tan. Not going too heavy in certain spots to where it causes runs. Hopefully away from the interior right here. If you guys get some paint on it, it's fine. Um, if you applied that paper towel and stuff inside there, but try to stay away from it the best you can. Now, immediately after this, make sure you guys get like a paper plate or uh, you could use a cup, piece of wood, anything you can really pull up the paint. Uh, we're gonna be going over like a basic um, sponging kind of method. You can use a paper towel, uh, sponge, or anything that you can really dab paint onto your weapon system, so cool. So once you guys have your good base layer down, all right, I'm using tan again. Make sure it's dry to the touch. We're gonna just use just a basic kind of sponge method. So again, paper plate, plastic bag, cup, whatever it is, I'm using this piece of two by four. Get it really close. Just kind of pull up some of that paint. With a paper towel, you can use a sponge. 
orange, just kind of make it all random looking. Soak up some of that paint with the paper towel and then all I'm doing Just kind of dabbing this stuff on here. You can use different kind of clumped up bits to make a thicker part. Every so often I'm re-getting it wet in some paint. applying more pressure and stuff as you guys go in different spots just making sure it totally gets covered cool so kind of my base layer right there for the lower hit this other side of this upper hand guard Try to see if I can make some light colored tan though first. Okay, so after you guys add that, um, I cut up small pieces of Magic Eraser. You can also just fold up a paper towel with a, kind of a little edge on it. I'm gonna be going over kind of this tiger striping type method. Once you guys apply this stuff too, again, just show you if you wanna add some dark. Here's some dark brown um, in here. Again, try to use something really fine. So I'm using just the point of this magic eraser that I cut up. And when you're adding this brown stuff in here, you're just kind of just being very sparse with it. Trying to kind of follow some of these green and stuff that I did earlier. Don't feel like you can really make, you know, a mistake here. Be as random or as thick or as thin as you want it to be on this. If you notice too that you're doing kind of too much dark color, like this could be a little bit dark and maybe going towards more of the woodland side, I can go back with the tan or lighter green and just kind of accent some of these darker colors here in a little bit. I'll demonstrate it.
Okay, we'll let that dry, and then we'll add some light color here to it in just a minute. Okay, so once you guys have your base kind of layered down, I'm gonna add a little bit lighter color to this. Again, best to work from light to dark, but of lighter color on top. Okay, so after you guys get your kind of stripes laid in, using just kind of the tip. Um, so last little part of the video, totally up to you guys if you want to do it or not. Um, once I have my dry kind of painted gun with 220 um, or some of the finer stuff, I'm just going to lightly kind of go over it. Um, just kind of knock down and kind of almost blend some of this darker stuff into light. So I painted it tan below. So if I put pressure on any of these, I'm able to get kind of a lighter sheen. So I'm just gonna go over the entire gun, just kind of wearing it down some, uh, you know, until you're kind of content on what it looks like to you. So that's it. Again, not really trying to sand any of the paint off completely, just kind of roughing it up some, breaking off kind of some of that shine. Cool. Okay, so once you guys have it completely painted, you're good to take all your paper towels out. Alright guys, so that wraps it up for the weapon camouflage video. I hope you got something out of this video. If you guys have any comments or concerns about the process of camouflaging your weapon with spray paint, feel free to ask me in the comments. Always down to kind of help you guys out and stuff. If you would like to as well, we also have a Patreon, so go check us out over there. We're on all the other social media platforms as well. And if you guys are in Southern California, feel free to come check us out. We have a training center near Anaheim, California called Low Signature Resource Center. So. Again, that wraps up for the video. Have a good day, guys. Stay lethal.